When doing experiments with proteins, like when separating them to isolate a protein of interest, how do you detect if there's actually protein present in the solution you're looking at, and that it isn't just a liquid filled with miscellaneous stuff? Well, proteins are structures made up of several amino acids like this one, which are molecules that contain an amine group, a carboxylic acid group, and a side chain which is symbolized by the letter R. Each of the 20 amino acids has a characteristic side chain. Now these amino acids are linked to each other by a peptide bond, which are bonds that are formed between the amino group of one amino acid and the carbonyl group of another. One after the other, they're bound together to form a long polypeptide chain. There's many qualitative tests to try depending on the protein you're looking at. In this video, we'll cover just a few of these, including the Bayeret test, Kumasi Brilliant Blue, Ninhydrin test, Xanthoproteic test, Mion's test, Sakaguchi test, and the lead sulfide test. The Bayeret test is used to determine the presence of peptide bonds in solution. So we add Bayeret reagent, which is a solution made up of sodium hydroxide, copper sulfate, and sodium potassium tartrate. The sodium hydroxide is what gives it its alkaline property, and the sodium potassium tartrate stabilizes the copper ions. The principle is that in a strongly basic solution, the blue colored copper ions form a complex with the peptide bonds. Once this complex forms, the solution goes from being blue to purple. If there's no color change and the solution remains blue, then this is a negative result and means that there's no protein present in the solution we're testing. But any substance containing peptide bonds will form a purple complex, giving a positive result to the test. And if the solution happens to turn pink, this means that there are peptides present, but that they're short chains of amino acids. The Bayeret reagent gets darker when you have higher concentrations of amino acids, so the Bayeret test can also be used to quantify the amount of protein in the solution. The stronger the purple color, the higher the number of peptide copper complexes, which means that we have more peptides in solution. The Bayeret test can also be used to detect protein in urine. Too much protein in the urine can lead to kidney disease, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Another way to detect proteins is by using a reagent called Kumasi Brilliant Blue. Kumasi is frequently used for staining proteins in polyacrylamide gels so that we can visualize them. It's a conjugated organic molecule that has a pinwheel-like chemical structure and is characterized as a triphenylmethane dye because it has three phenylmethane groups, which makes it good at absorbing light and gives it its blue color. When protein is fixed on a gel like this one, we add the Kumasi blue and it gets stuck non-specifically to wherever there's protein on the gel. And how exactly does it do this? Well, Kumasi molecule binds non-covalently to proteins because of the sulfuric acid groups that can be negative or neutral depending on the pH. When we want to stain, we need our protein to be in conditions where the Kumasi has an overall negative charge so that it can bind reversibly to the positively charged parts of proteins. So that would be the basic amino acids like arginine, lysine, and histidine through electrostatic interactions. Kumasi also binds to the part of the protein without charges through van der Waals interactions especially to aminos with rings like phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. This involves shifting around electrons when molecules get close together, so proteins with a lot of aromatic aminos tend to stain better. The ninhydrin test also works to detect the presence of amino acids. Triketohydrindine hydrate, or more simply called ninhydrin, is a powerful oxidizing agent used to detect the presence of amino acids. So we add ninhydrin solution to an amino acid or protein solution and heat it. The principle is that ninhydrin degrades the amino acid into aldehydes, ammonia, and CO2. And what we end up with is a partially reduced form of ninhydrin. Then, more ninhydrin molecule condenses with ammonia and the partially reduced form of the ninhydrin to produce an intensely blue-purple product we call rumen's purple. If it turns a dark purple color, it means that there were proteins or amino acids, with the exception of proline. Proline and hydroxyproline give a yellow color. Why? Well, because they aren't alpha amino acids. When proline is in a peptide bond, it doesn't have a hydrogen on the alpha carbon, so it can't ever donate a hydrogen bond to stabilize an alpha helix or beta sheet, the way that other amino acids can. Fingerprints contain small amounts of amino acids, so ninhydrin is also used at crime scenes to detect fingerprints. The xanthoproteic test detects aromatic amino acids, tyrosine and tryptophan. 
We add concentrated nitric acid to our protein or amino acid solution, which causes the phenyl ring to become nitrated. And this yields a yellow colored nitro derivative. Then we add some base because at alkaline pH, the color changes to orange due to the ionization of the phenyl group. But if you know your amino acids, you might be asking yourself, phenylalanine has an aromatic group. Why isn't it included? Well, tyrosine and tryptophan contain activated benzene rings that we can easily nitrate. Phenylalanine's benzene ring is stable and difficult to nitrate under normal conditions, so it won't react with this test and it'll give a negative result. Mion's test detects the amino acid tyrosine specifically, the only amino acid containing a phenyl ring, which is a hydroxyl group attached to a benzene ring. We use a reagent called Mion's reagent, which is a solution of mercuric nitrate in nitric acid. The principle is that the phenyl group is nitrated by nitric acid in solution. Then the nitrated tyrosine forms a complex with mercury ions to form a brick red product. This red color indicates that the test was positive. No red color indicates that the test was negative and means that there's no phenyl or tyrosine. So Miel's test isn't specific for proteins, it gives a positive test for any other compound containing phenyl functional groups. So often the biuret test or an anhydrin tests are used with it to confirm that it is in fact protein and not just a phenyl compound in the solution. The Sakaguchi test detects guanidine groups, so it specifically detects the amino acid arginine. The principle is that in alkaline solution, arginine reacts with alpha naphthol and sodium hypobromite, and this results in a red colored complex which indicates a positive test. So any protein that contains arginine will end up giving a positive result. The lead sulfide test detects sulfur containing amino acids like cysteine. The principle is that a sulfhydryl group will react with sodium hydroxide to form inorganic sodium sulfide. For simplicity, I won't show the whole reaction, but lead acetate is added and forms lead sulfide, which is a black precipitate. So if we observe the formation of a black precipitate in the solution, then this indicates a positive test and that there was cysteine present. So that concludes this video on lab methods used to detect the presence of amino acids. Thanks for watching.